The officials this weekend had a, had a brutal weekend. <laughs> a brutal weekend. I know Patriots fans are all crazy about what Keelan, you know, Keelan Cole looked like he was out of bounds. There's no look like. I mean, he was out of bounds. Chris, I think if the ruling on the field was he was out of bounds and the um, Raiders asked to review it, he would have been that, – that would have stood his cold, Even too. from that angle, you can tell his toe's on the line. I don't know. You can't tell from that angle. Come on, his toe's dude. On the line. His toe is in the white. But take a look at all the white that's on the – on the field because again the Raiders symbol is made of white paint there's white paint all over the end zone like they should make sure that they clean up their own end zone like they need to sweep their own end zone you have no idea if the chalk that everybody's saying he kicked up was actually on the field of play you don't because there's chalk everywhere take a look at that photograph one more time you take a look at this, Even from this the white back chalk angle, you can see that his toe is toe. on the line yeah it looks like his toe's on the line well didn't go their way there and i know but that's not even remotely close to these other plays that i'm talking about yeah i mean it's last night brutal you know i guess the officials don't have to let receivers know if they are properly lined up on the line of scrimmage like it's they not don't? they don't like it's not required of them i guess that's just it a, happens at a professional every level. courtesy it and apparently peewee and high school and terry and mclaurin college. said that and terry mclaurin said that that professional courtesy was, in fact, extended to him last night. Wow. A lot of times you'll always see the receiver look at the official like. Terry McLaurin's lined up, and, and he looks right at the official, who does appear to be giving him like a, hey, you're good. And he wasn't. And as soon as the play is snapped, as soon as the, the play starts and the ball snapped and they hand it off to Brian Robinson, the flag comes out. And that was before, you know, Robinson could have been stopped for all those folks out there who think that the officials are not on the up and up. The official in question is named Carl Johnson. He's the former head of NFL refs. He was once upon a time elevated. Now, I guess you could say demoted is the phrase. I don't know, but he's no longer the head of NFL refs. And there's been others who have since had that role. Walt Anderson now currently in that role. If he told him you're fine and then throws the flag on, I'm like, what the hell is that about? And that only set up the missed pass interference call. Again, Curtis Samuel goes up for a potential game-tying touchdown. They needed the two-point conversion to tie it. Darnay Holmes is draped on him. I mean, in the photograph we have from our friends at Getty Images is from the back. I mean, if you, you look at the game replay... There's a, a moment where the ball has yet to even crease the end zone, and Holmes is got like, like he's asking for a piggyback hey, ride. Bear like, it's insane. Yeah. After the game, John Hussey was the head uh, r- official last night. Told the pool reporter that um, uh, there's no such obligation for the linesman to tell a, a receiver if he's cool. Not typically, and the official could be doing other things like counting the offense. There's a multitude of different duties, so I can't confirm whether the official even saw that or not, but he was clearly off the line of scrimmage. As for the pass interference not being called, pass interference is a judgment call, Hussey said. The officials that didn't rise to what they felt was a restriction, so thus they didn't call it. They missed it. They missed it. You can't look at that and say he's not, he's not being, <laughs> Samuel's on. not being restricted. They missed it. They blew it. They blew it. And then nothing was worse, though, than the Vikings-Colts game. I, I, I honestly, I thought we were long since past the officials blowing the whistle too quick. I thought Jeff Triplett blowing the whistle on a clear sack fumble in the Chiefs-Titans playoff game from about five years ago ended this discussion. Remember that when Mariota got sacked, fumble, yep. and he they blew the whistle saying no no fumble because his forward progress was stopped. Well, his forward progress was stopped by the hit that caused the fumble. <laughs> what are you doing by blowing a whistle and saying, oh, yeah, 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 no, no, forward progress stopped so there can't be a fumble. No, no. The forward progress was stopped when he was sacked. Uh, I, what are we doing? I thought we were done with that. Now you see so many plays get, you know, where it's clear that the ball hit the ground or it's clear that it was incomplete, and you see somebody pick it up and run it in the end zone, and the officials are following the play and signaling touchdown. You're going, wait a minute, that, that, that doesn't count. You're seeing plays go so far 
allowed to be ran out these days. And I pr- appreciate that, actually, because run it out. Don't blow it because you can't put the genie back in the bottle when you say forward progress has been called. And two times, two times in the Vikings-Colts game, twice in the game, Shannon Sullivan had two returns for touchdowns called back. Same guy. Two of them. One of them they at least got were allowed to be kept. They got you got to keep the ball after you review it, say, oh yeah, the ball did come loose. And so everything after it's wiped out. But one, it was a forward progress whistle happens, ball comes loose. And I'll tell you what. The Colts probably would have preferred it. Same with Frank Reich, because there wouldn't have been a 33-point comeback. It would have just been like a 22-point comeback had you allowed one of these returns for touchdown to happen. But nothing's worse than the end of the game. I'm getting set to call Browns-Ravens, which, by the way, in my opinion, game of the weekend, because I called it. And, I'm trying to hype it. And it was a normal, straightforward yeah. football game. Yeah, Nothing insane you know, happened. No. Including touchdowns. Uh, the Browns scored an offensive mm, touchdown. Well, I mean, Justin Tucker would say it's an outlier when he misses a field goal and has one blocked. That's true. First time in five years he had two missed field goals in the same game. Jesus. Yep. <laughs> wow. What a weekend. Only the second red zone turnover of the season for the Ravens. I mean, there were some crazy things to happen there. All right, fair. And I saw the elf in person for the first time. Hey, now. Mm-hmm. But I'm watching the end of this game with uh, interest, personal interest, because I wanted this game to end. So my game with Kurt Warner would start on time. So I wanted to see, could this game end? And if the Colts had gotten that first down on fourth and one on the quarterback sneak with Matt Ryan, the game would have been over. So I'm sitting there and thinking, well, Ryan's got it. Because uh, the sound is down, I don't hear a whistle. He's shoving the pile and shoving the pile and shoving the pile and then falls down past the line to gain. First down. No body parts go down. He falls down across the line. First down. Until I see the official run in and he's spotting the ball where his forward progress was initially stopped. And I'm thinking, did they call forward progress on a quarterback sneak? Did they really do that? Well, I guess not, because they allowed it to be reviewed. Well, wait a minute. You're not supposed to allow reviews on something that's forward progress being stopped. So, okay, he's going to get the first down. Because you look at the review, and Matt Ryan, none of his body parts hit the ground. None of them. He's just on top of other humans, and then falls over, and that's a first down. After further review, play stands is called. What? So are you spotting him where his forward progress stopped? Because if you did, you shouldn't have reviewed it in the first place. Honestly. Or were they reviewing it where his forward progress was stopped to see if it was stopped before the line again? I just don't get it. And it's so confusing and it's so damaging. Because the whole country's seeing it. Honestly. I don't know how the heck those refs can't be so downgraded that we don't see them on a national broadcast or any playoff game the rest of the year. But I don't know. With the NFL officiating the front office, sometimes they're like, good job. <laughs> good job on that, you know, on the, the taunting penalty for just staring at a bench. That's the way we want it called. But then they'll surprise you and turn around and go, yeah, you know, that passer, uh, rough in the passer penalty that we saw that – Removed a pick six for the 49ers on Thursday night in front of the whole country. That's That was wrong. Which is good to hear because, yeah, that was wrong. Nick Bosa called 15 yards for playing football. So, But what good does, hey, that was our bad, because, do uh, two days later? Because, because then you know the, the notes going out to all the officials everywhere that we don't want it called this way. So the next one won't happen. Or at least that's the the idea that the next one won't happen. And other than the pass, rough in the passer stuff this year, I think this year has been well officiated. This weekend, no bueno. No bueno. And unfortunately for NFL officials, the Washington game, the Vikings game, nationally televised contest. 
And the whole country saw on their phones what was going on in Vegas with Keelan Cole. And to me, that's the least egregious of all three, personally. I know I don't have anything personal on it like a Patriot fan might. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.